Welcome to Teacher Time Mastery, the podcast made for secondary English language arts teachers like you, with your host, Becky Zarr. Inventive ways to save grading time with ZipGrade in an ELA room. Hey there, secondary ELA teachers. Less than a month from now, and we will be welcoming back our students to another educational year. Actually, some of you may have already started, and some of you may be starting in way less than a month. But I know it stinks thinking about how tedious it is to create and then grade assignments. Like, oh my gosh, for me, if grading could just never be a thing again, my life would be good. (laughs) It's my least favorite part of it. But it really just does kill the excitement of going back and seeing all the kids. It's unfortunately just part of our job, though. The good thing is that there are innovative tools and apps out there that make our work so much easier. And I'm going to be talking about one of them today. The TLDR version of this is you're seriously missing out if you're not using ZipGrade to streamline your grading system. Okay, so for today's topic, I will share about one app, I've already hinted at the name, that has helped me create an easy grading system for my classes without having to rely on our tech for support or countless hours grading old school style. So if you're not yet familiar with ZipGrade, then you're in the right place. Or if you've been familiar with it for a while, but you're willing to learn a few more tricks, stick around. I will tell you all about this revolutionary grading app that has helped me cut my grading time in half. And that's a conservative estimate. It's way more than half. So ZipGrade, what is it? It's a cost-effective app that lets teachers like us streamline our grading system for bell work, multiple choice tests, quizzes, assessments, and even as rubrics for writing our projects. If you're ancient like me and used Scantrons for college exams, it's the same general idea, but so much cheaper and way more flexible. Using a mobile device like your phone or a tablet, get the camera, use it as a scanner, and it generates results within seconds and organizes them for us in a way that is really easy to review. So that's kind of the short version of all of this. So let's dive in a little deeper. So how exactly do you use ZipGrade? And does it really help to save time? Yeah, it really does. Step one. First, you need to download and print a blank answer sheet from ZipGrade's website. You can even design your own custom answer sheets depending on your needs and use. This is part of their online platform. It's just under answer sheets. And then you go down and you can customize your own. So handy. Step two, distribute the blank form to your students and administer the test as usual. Students can use a pen, a pencil, or a marker to mark their answers on the bubbles. Remind them to use a dark colored pen or marker for best results, though. That is one hiccup I found. I had a student one year who loved lime green. Loved, loved, loved it. And she had a pen that was lime green colored, and she tried to use that for her test, but it just didn't pick it up very well. So... That's something we learned. Use a dark colored pen or marker. Okay, step three. Go download the ZipGrade app and log in. It's free. iOS, Android, whatever you have, it's free. Use it. It's amazing. Once you're in there from the dashboard, you can start adding your quiz and make sure that you choose the same number of question bubbles as what you have for your test. Um, But don't worry if there are unused bubbles at the end. That's really no biggie. It will only grade according to the answer key you'll set up in step number four. So here we go. Step number four. Enter the answer key or simply scan a clear copy of the answer sheet. This was my favorite way to do it. I would just have an extra sheet for myself. I would fill in my answers. For the name, I would just put key so I would know that 
it's there for me. And I can just scan that and it'll import all of the correct answers for you. Awesome. But you can totally do it from your phone or even the website too. Just mark which ones are correct. You can adjust point values per questions. Uh, you can link it to tags you set up for like standards or topics or whatever it may be. And then you can also do partial point options for incorrect answers. So let's say that, um, I don't know, you had a multiple choice question where it was, the correct answer was blue and green. You wanted them to select both of those options, but they only selected blue. You could give them half credit for that if you wanted to. Um, if you have multiple versions of the same quiz or assignment, this is awesome as well. You simply just create a key for each version. And then on the answer sheets, the students just mark which key version they have. So if they have version A, fill in bubble A and so forth. That way when you scan it, it just automatically goes to the right one. Okay, step number five, choose the option scan answers from the Zipgrade app and scan. There you go. You can have it pause in between so you can review or there's like a super speed version where you can just go bloop, 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 bloop as you're going along. Um, yeah, that one was awesome if I was entering grades in after school was out. The other version where it kind of paused, I really liked that if students were bringing their work up to me. And let's say they just did this huge test and they're really nervous about how they did. I can do a quick scan for them. They see their score. And then if they have questions about something, then we can look over it right then and there. Okay, so how I've leveled up with Zipgrade. First and foremost is simply the grading time. I use Zipgrade regularly for at least four years and it definitely reduced my grading time. I cannot tell you the joy that I would get when I could scan a huge test in literally a snap. Walking out of that classroom at the end of contract time never tasted so sweet. My district's computers and internet connections were questionable at best. Plus, we had a rash of cheating while using the laptops, so we had to switch to paper-based assignments and tests, at least for a while. Zipgrade really saved me here. Even when it came to worksheets, I would make minor adjustments on their pages so that they could easily mark their answers on the bubble sheet. For instance, if we were working on grammar, We'd do it SAT, ACT style with A being no change, B, correction option number one, put in whatever you want, uh, C, correction option number two, D, correction option number three. This turned out to be awesome for the kids who were taking the SAT and ACT too, as they were super familiar and comfortable with this format come test day. So it's not all horrible when it comes to bubble tests. Uh, if there was a matching activity, I would just label the options A through E, so A, B, C, D, E, so they could quickly mark them on the bubbles. For longer matching questions, double up the letters. Just make sure you don't have any repeats. So beyond the A, B, C, D, and E, we could have A, B, A, C, A, D, A, E, B, C, B, D, B, E, C, D, C, E, and D, E, all with a standard test. <laughs> and now that's a lot going on here, but the main idea is you don't want to double up letters because the Scantron is going to read B, E the same as E, B. So make sure you don't do that. And obviously we can't have like B, B because they're the same letter. The students can only fill in one bubble. <laughs> so that's what you can do for just a standard answer sheet. But if you created a custom answer sheet online, you could add a whole bunch of letters and give it a huge combination of options even. Uh, students would just mark the letters for the option. If it's a two letter option, they mark both letters and you would just mark the double letter combo as the correct option for the key. Easy peasy. Uh, for fill in the blank questions, I get this question a lot too. I would often just create a little word bank for their choices and label them with the letters as I mentioned before. There's, you know, 
not everyone would agree with that system, but it still allowed me to see if they knew what was going on. I would often throw in a bunch of extra fillers into that word bank to make them work for it a little bit more. And it still allowed me to see, you know, if they were understanding what's going on. Now the big one, the big thing that holds us up in the ELA world. What about short answer questions? What about essays? What about projects or speeches or whatever you can think of? All those other things that we do. Well, I'm about to blow your mind because I turned the zip grade custom sheets into rubrics. I could just really quickly and easily fill in that rubric, scan it in with the other things, and I'm done. So when I was setting up my sheets online and you go into that custom answer sheet little wizard deal they have set up, choose verbose labels for the question option. And then you can list something like um, E is exceeds, M is meets, B is below expectations, um, I incomplete, or whatever you wanted to put on there. Now that could be, you know, question number 42 of a 100 point quiz, <laughs> or that would be more like a test, I guess. But you can put it in there with your other questions and then just make sure that students are aware that when they hit one of those questions, they just fill in their answer on their test sheet or on the back side of their zip grade sheet numbered. And then you just have to quickly read that and then mark it real fast on the rubric. When you're doing your key, you know, you could give the exceeds four points, meets three, below two, and, you know, so on and so forth. So you have a lot of flexibility in there. Now, if I was using it for a full-on essay or a big multi-part project or something like that, then I would have each question be one of the things they were being graded on. So... For instance, if I was doing, um, I don't know, six trait writings coming to mind. So if we were working on six trait writing, um, I would say, okay, number one, this is where I'm going to be grading ideas. And then I could do the exceeds, meets, blow, blah, 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 blah. You could even have that pair up to an existing rubric and then just, you know, say like, okay, number one is this this area they're being graded on. Number two is this area they're being graded on. Um, so the whole point of this is that it just makes it easier for you to get that grading in and done. Because rubrics overall make it so much easier to grade these type of things. But having it on zip grade kind of elevates it to a whole other field. Because you get to scan it when you're done. It does all the math for you. It does all the calculations for you. And it can shoot those answers out to your students. You can either have it where you can print out the little scanned version of it. Um, I almost never did that, though, because I would have Zipgrade send them emails. I would just put that into, like, their little student accounts. Um, send them emails with the results. Or you can even just have them upload to the student portal that they have on there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a huge thing. And speaking of online and student portals, since the whole COVID thing went on, they now have a lot of hybrid options. So you can use the same thing for online learners as you can ones who are in your classroom. Um, so don't, don't rule out the online version. I'm just way more familiar with the paper version because that's what I really used. Um, and I also use that a lot because, like I said, our computers, our internet, and sometimes even our students couldn't be trusted. <laughs> so it was good to have a backup there. Okay, so here's another way that I would use Zipgrade is for bell work. Now there's two different ways I did this for different classes, um, but what I love about this is you can laminate these zip grade sheets, laminate them. Then, like for my bell work questions, after I had them laminated, I could easily just tape them onto the corner of a student's desk for bell work. The students would use a dry erase marker or a wet erase marker, and then they just 
add their name or you can even have it with their student ID and then they mark their answer to whatever bell work question you have up on the board. All you have to do is walk down the aisles or walk around your groups, scan it with your phone, and there you go. It'll generate the results in an instant to show you who is understanding what. It'll even show you little graphs of how, you know, overall the class is doing. It's awesome. And I usually made bell work a review question from the previous day. So this was an awesome snapshot of their comprehension. It allowed me to... Um, to review any missed topics before beginning the new lesson. It was almost like triage. <laughs> triage for things that they were like, whoa, we are way off on this. So here's my quick picture. Let's fix this real quick before we dive any deeper. Okay, so another way that I used it for bell work um, I mentioned earlier that ZipGrade also allows teachers to create a custom rubric on their website for just about anything you'd like. One of the first ways I used this was for bell work journals for a writing class I had. I simply just made this custom little sheet, taped or laminated it onto the top corner of their notebook covers, their journal covers, and it allowed me to quickly grade, mark their journal completion score with a wet erase marker uh, that wouldn't rub off in the stack, <laughs> and then set it aside for later. When I'm done, I just grab my phone, open the ZipGrade app, and scan it. Bloop, 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 bloop. Just scan it real quick on repeat through the whole stack. It was, oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> Then I would leave that rubric filled in when I hand it back to the students and then they could, you know, wipe it off with a, I don't know, Clorox wipe or something when they're all done. But it would also send them those emails. We could also have it upload to that ZipGrade student portal on the website and so that they get to see it themselves as well. Um, another thing with that, when I was laminating them, Obviously, those students are going to have the same name and ID number. You can print out, like once you put your students into ZipGrade, way easier to do online, by the way. <laughs> when you do that, you can import your students from a CSV file. So like download from PowerSchool, for example, and then you can upload it here. And, um... oh, sorry. I got distracted. I had the website pulled up in front of me as I was talking about that. Um, but yeah, once you do that, you can download, I think they call them like quiz packs or something like that. Um, so once you have a quiz set up, you can go in and print like the answer sheets for that with your students information already put in there. Super, super handy. Um, so yeah, I would really recommend it if you're going to do something like the Bell Work Journals where they have it, it's theirs, they're going to have it forever, and it's only going to be theirs, <laughs> then that would be a great way to do it. Otherwise, like with the little laminated cards I would put on with like a question or two up in the corner of the desk, um, for those, I left the student name and the student ID blank so that, you know, whoever's sitting there can fill it in for themselves. Okay, now, another way that I used it was evaluating my own teaching. So aside from saving time grading, I also use ZipGrade to evaluate my teaching, which I guess is still kind of grading. It's just grading me. Our district asked us to have students complete a teacher evaluation at the end of each semester and for us to analyze the data in a short reflection on how we could use it to improve. Great idea, giant pain in the tush. However, I got the idea to have students complete their evaluations of me on a zip grade sheet without points assigned to the answers or anything like that, just recording what they had and then I can scan them, see their responses, and get a real quick breakdown by question of the ratings. So it gave me those same little charts and let me know, hey, this one is doing good. This one needs some work. It made it a lot easier for me to uh, look at that, see what 
who was lacking a little bit or what was doing well, write up a quick little response for it and be on my way, basically. Um, I also included a written response for the final comments at the end for something like this. And uh, for this portion of it, I just had students write on the back of their answer sheets. So that's always an option as well. Don't forget that it's not just a form. You can scan it. That's amazing. But yeah, have them write on the back of the answer sheets for some things. It makes it a lot easier. Um, yeah, Zipgrade is just so easy and convenient to use, honestly. Teachers can use their standard answer sheets that they have with 20, 50, or 100 questions Um, Or you can create your own, which I loved. I started out with the standard ones, but I quickly went down the rabbit hole of creating custom answer sheets for just about everything and then reusing them year after year after year. It was great. But of course, there are limitations to using the app. For instance, it can't be used for instant grading of essays and whatnot, but after you read it and mark on your rubric, it can scan and enter scores for their work for you. You can even download the Excel spreadsheets from the website and upload them directly into PowerSchool. Now, last time I did that was a few years ago, so they may have upgraded that. Um, I don't know, you just have to look and see what you can get for it, but I used to use that hack of downloading the, uh, the CSVs and then uploading them into PowerSchool all the time. It was awesome. Um, So overall, as a teaching companion, I use the Zipgrade analytics to identify which topic I need to emphasize or for review for my students because it instantly shows me which questions were answered incorrectly. So I would often use Zipgrade for like a quick in-class review before the test (laughs) so that I could say, oh boy, we really need to hit on, you know, whatever the topics were before test day. Um, It just, it really helped me to adjust my teaching style as needed. And it was just a really nice quick way to show your admin that you're using data-driven teaching methods as well. So that's an extra perk to it. Additionally, I find that students also benefit from using Zipgrade as it reduces their anxiety of having to wait until the next day or sometimes week to find out their test results. They can bring it right to your desk and see their score almost instantly. Having a clear picture of how they did with the quiz enhances their success as they go about their other subjects. Their brains aren't going to be stuck in the world of your test and whether or not they passed. So if you're not yet using Zipgrade, now is the right time to check it out. The app is available on both Android and iOS, so go ahead and download it. The free version lets you scan up to 100 papers a month, or if you feel like being a big spender, you can drop the $6.99, yes, you heard me, $6.99 for a full year on the premium plan. That's all in. I started out with the free plan and very quickly upgraded. It's less than a dollar a month for the whole school year. Plus, you can reuse all of these answer sheets and customize assignments year after year. Set them up once, rinse and repeat. And no, I'm not an affiliate of Zipgrade. I just had to share how it made things so much easier for me as an ELA teacher. At first glance, it may seem better suited for a math or a science class, But with a little imagination and ingenuity, it's a perfect fit for any ELA classroom too. P.S. I would love to know what you think about Zipgrade. So don't forget to follow me on my socials. Let me know how it's going. Let me know what questions you have or if I can help you design something. I've spent a lot of time in their system, (laughs) so I can probably give you a hand with that. My Instagram handle is just at New Horizons Academy LLC. And it's the same thing for Facebook as well. New Horizons Academy LLC. PPS, I've included Zipgrade sheets and keys for all of the quizzes in Vocab Vigor, my vocabulary program, with four different quiz versions to boot. So each and every set has four different quiz versions, all set up with Zipgrade answer sheets. Couldn't be easier. So 
click on the link in the show notes to check out Vocab Bigger. Thanks everyone, and I will see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Teacher Time Mastery Podcast with your host, Becky Zarr. Tune in next week for another new episode designed just for secondary ELA teachers like you. 